Good afternoon. I'm Tammy from Acclaimed Heating, Cooling, and Furnace Cleaning, and this is my wonderful husband. I'm Kevin Lackey, same company. Yeah, we're here to spend some time with you this Friday afternoon. We meet weekly. We try to meet weekly. Last week I was missing, and you were with Paul at Contact Renovations job site, and that was really awesome to get. And there's Ashley coming on. Hi, Ashley. Um, so we are going to hop right into the Dear Kevin letter. Ready, Kevin? I'm ready to answer it. This one actually makes me a little bit, this is a flashback for me, being a child and being scared of things that went bump in the night. So, all right, right here you go, Kevin. It's from signed, Things That Go Bump in the Night. Dear okay. Kevin, having recently purchased a new home with a mid-efficiency furnace, this means learning a new to us heating system and the sounds that go along with it. What are some common HVAC noises? What do they mean and should I be concerned? Signed, Things That Go Bump in the Night. You know, it's unbelievable that we haven't had this question before because so many people have basement uh, bedrooms and we hear it all the time. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of things that make noise in a furnace. The first one is when the gas comes on. So when the gas comes on, it sounds a bit scary because you can actually hear all that flame kind of starting with the natural gas. Mm -hmm. uh, second thing is the sound of the fan coming on where you have it all kind of being pushed through the house. Right. And when that fan comes on, a lot of times it's not just the fan and the movement of air you feel, but sometimes there's, especially in the older furnaces, little uh, kind of cracks and, and, uh, and kind of crackles that happen, and sometimes even bangs, like we were talking today, yep. and we've had instances, we probably have three or four a year, where when the furnace fan comes on, the ductwork expands or contracts, and that makes a really, really loud bang. Right. And that's really concerning if you don't know what it is. So when we go in there, if that's what it is, uh, that's a great solution, uh, or it's an easy solution for the problem. Whereas if it's a bang that's not from that, then it's usually the natural gas is, is not doing so well, and it's kind of having almost a little explosion in there, and uh, that's not so good. Yeah, is there any concern or any worry when people go to explore those sounds that are happening? Because often people want to troubleshoot that before they give right. us a call. And yeah. I'm wondering whether or not, how deep should they go to investigate that or not? Right, that's a great question. I would suggest that if you're not having to take your furnace panels off at all, if you're not touching your actual furnace, and so you're there and you're uh, listening for things and see if you can find anything externally, that's great. But okay. you definitely should not be going looking for those issues, taking the furnace panels off for sure. And I know that when you first move to a house or get a new furnace or anything like that, what often happens is people then all of a sudden hear things that they never heard before and then quickly quickly we get used to that. Um, and there's, hello Rob, nice to see you. Uh, we are, I'm wondering what we should do or what people should do when they start not noticing that sound. Should they be aware, should they be listening to their furnace periodically to see what it's making or just like let it just be? No, you should be doing it. And I mean, it's one of the reasons why it's a, it's a smart investment to get a preventative maintenance done on your furnace every year. Okay. It's for that type of thing. Uh, that way when the technician is there, doing preventative maintenance, they're checking all sorts of things and taking a lot of time to really check each individual component uh, electronically and in a very, very high level of service and checking that. And then you can ask that technician at that time, you know, this is what I've been experiencing. Is that normal? Is it not normal? Uh, that type of thing. That's the opportunity to, to do that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, you always want to ask questions. As a child, it always seemed like the furnace made the most spookiest sounds when you were trying to fall asleep and everybody was quiet and had already gone to sleep. And that, those were the times when it seems that you hear those sounds. Now, is there like temperatures that make that sound happen more often than others? Or is it just in a little girl's head being spooked by the sounds when everyone else is quiet? Well, I, I, would, I would think it's like any other sound that happens at night when there's no other sounds in the house, everything's still and you're still also, there's no noise anywhere. So whatever noise there is, is going to be amplified right. uh, that time of day. And we've had clients where they're really experiencing a lot of noise from their furnace, but when you kind of mine down to it and try to figure out what's going on, you realize that it's usually one person uh, in, in the couple that hears 
Happy me. That, uh, that, that hears something that the other person oftentimes can't even hear. And we begin to think that we're a bit crazy, and others may think that we are a bit well, crazy. Well, us at Acclaim, we would never think you're crazy. No. Usually I mean, the spouse <laughs> thinks that the other spouse is crazy, for sure, but we would never think such a thing. Yes. Uh, yeah, and, and that's a difficult thing to kind of solve for people, too. Yes. Yeah, Melinda says that her, gran her grandparents' farmhouse, and that is it. That is true. You start hearing the creepiest sounds at night, um, and especially in a home when you are not familiar with the sounds and the surroundings, for sure, that makes it. It amplifies the sounds that you're hearing and it adds when you add darkness to the night and throw in the sounds it just feels like a, a horror fest it yeah. does yeah. all right well thank you kevin for answering that question oh you're welcome and that was a great topic you had a nice visit with paul last week yeah i saw paul at uh from contact renovations at uh at one of his job sites where they're doing a kitchen remodel and a whole bunch of other stuff and uh exciting for paul uh this week i know that uh he's going to be embarking on um the the full from the ground up uh, build of a boutique custom home uh, in one of Edmonton's mature neighborhoods so that's uh, that's really really neat to hear for Paul and his crew as well because they do everything so well yeah. and uh, and Paul was was great as it always is uh, look uh, for four videos from question and answer that I did with Paul as well uh, for the upcoming weeks we'll be releasing one one of those a week and we've got some really good information in there from one of Edmonton's best renovators uh, in that yeah, it's neat when we have um, their folks in for a, a problem that we're trying to, we think that there, there's just not a solution for something that's going to be easy or cheap. They really can come up with some out-of-the-box solutions that are economical, functional, and like super creative. There's an element Absolutely. of creativity with the carpentry, for sure, an artistic flair for that, for sure. Yeah, there's no doubt. Yes. Yeah. Well, that is all we have this week. Do you have anything else, Kevin? I have nothing else than to, uh, to think it's not going to be quite as cold this weekend, but it's still supposed to be cold. Winter's definitely not left us yet. I think it's here for a while. No, it absolutely is. It feels sharp outside today. The sun is bright, which is nice, but it does make the air crisp. It's still very crisp. Yes, it does. All right, so I have, we have a note here that there's a, a Lunar New Year's Eve, or New, New Year's event at Bonnie Dune this Saturday, which will be really cool to kind of check that out. It's a free event. The kids will enjoy that. I always enjoyed when we used to go to a Chinese food restaurant and we'd have the little placemat that showed you what all the years of the pets were based on when you were born. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So do you remember that? No. No? No, you never got to have that maybe, hey? No, I missed that childhood experience. Yes. Yes. Well, you're always hoping. I'm usually, I think I'm the, the year of the rat or something very unflattering <laughs> than that. <laughs> All right. Have a great weekend, folks. We'll see you next week. And please, we appreciate the comments that you have. We saw we, there was a comment from Darlene on here. We appreciate the comments, the watching, the sharing of our videos. We also really appreciate if you can uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. So we also have a lot of the videos on our YouTube channel uh, for the Acclaimed. We also have an Acclaimed Homeowners Club, which is, also has their own YouTube channel. We will put those links on this post. And we will see you next week. All right, have a good weekend, everybody. Bye.